Welcome to Coffee Break with Rachel V. Hill. Taking a daily look at the biggest stories in Denver sports and interacting live with you, the Coffee Break fam. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of joe, and enjoy your coffee break. Here's your host, Rachel V. Hill. The NBA play-in tournament gets set to begin tonight, and it's going to be a question of who will the Nuggets face and what's the easiest path for them, essentially, to repeat back-to-back champions. And there's only one person that I could, of course, talk to this about because he's got all the knowledge on everything NBA as we bring in our very own Jake Shapiro. How are you, my friend? Good. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm raring to go. We had a great college basketball season. I'm hoping the NBA postseason is just as fun. And we've got WNBA season around the corner. So just a great time for a basketball fan. No kidding. Okay, we will dive into the WNBA because I'm assuming you watched last night's draft. Uh, Caitlin Clark, it was no surprise that the fever would be taking her. But how much did you expect just the... I don't even know, like the overall atmosphere when it came to Caitlin. She had teammates who were in attendance who get called down and actually hear their name. And it just felt like the support was so large around her that it almost seemed like she was shying away from the moment just a bit. Yeah, you know, it's funny because from the draft perspective, it's going to be similar to the NFL draft. The real draft starts at two. Like we all knew Clark was going at one. So a lot of interesting stuff from the actual like WNBA fans like me of like what's going going on tonight. Last night was a big night for the Chicago Sky, who I'm a Mm -hmm. fan of, and the Los Angeles Sparks, two of the biggest teams in the league. Uh, making a lot of picks high up. So that was interesting. Camila Cardosa from South Carolina went three, yeah. who you probably saw in the national championship game. But yeah, Clark, uh, the stuff on her, uh, I don't think it was that interesting. I think it was kind of what I expected. But for all those people that are like, she's going to lose money by going to the WNBA. And then they found out what the WNBA rookie salary was and all this stuff. It's like she had three national insurance commercials within 10 minutes of her being She's drafted. <laughs> I, I think she made a lot of money last night for those who fake care about how much money Caitlin Clark is making. It's funny how it's all about the money, though. Like, isn't that just the biggest reality of like, oh, my gosh, it's not the fact that the jersey sh- sold out or anything. It's like, oh, she's going to lose money by going to the WNBA. Yeah, which is just completely unfounded, by the way. Uh, if you want to go see the Chicago Sky take on the Indiana Fever at Ch- the Chicago Sky's brand new arena that they just built specifically for the WNBA, tickets will pop- cost you $200 a pop. That's on the primary market, not even the secondary market. So this sport is blowing up. You talked about how Clark's jerseys have already sold out on Fanatics. Big shocker, Fanatics was underprepared for something. Um, so, yeah, like it, it, it's really cool to see that Clark has this upswelling. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's also been fun to see kind of the old heads and the WNBA veterans talking about the last few weeks, like, let's see if she really has it at the next level, because things will be tougher at the tougher level. Like, no doubt, things will be tougher at the tougher level. Uh, But this is the kind of stuff that the old heads do. This isn't like sexism or anything like that. It's just like, if I'm a competitor, I'm going to want to beat you. Of course, Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart want to beat Caitlin Clark. So I'm fascinated where her journey goes next. I will be locked in watching WNBA basketball this coming season. And this draft class could be an absolute game change changer. And then just tying it back to Denver real quick. Um, they again said yesterday, Kathy Engelbart, the commissioner of the WNBA, that Denver was, is within the primary group of teams, uh, cities to consider for an expansion team. Uh, the WNBA currently has 12 teams. They're expanding to 13 with Golden State. Denver got passed up for Portland a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Portland's bid fell apart after they announced it. So currently they want to get to 16 teams. There's three cities that can get a team before 2028. Denver is on the short list for that. So we could be seeing someone in this draft class on their way to Denver uh, in the next couple of years here, actually. Wow, that's crazy to even think about. And I want to go back to how you were talking about some of the old heads, and I'm now going to tie it back into the Denver Nuggets. Stephen A. Smith not giving his vote to Nicole Jokic for MVP. I know you had a wonderful article over at denversports.com. I'm curious your opinion on Stephen A. hyping Jokic last year when it came to the NBA Finals, and now this year not going to give him the nod? Uh, he's, He's selling product for ESPN, right? Like the NBA finals were on ESPN. He was on ESPN. He was trying to make sure more eyeballs were on Stephen A. Smith. Uh... Right now, he doesn't have to do that because the Denver Nuggets are not yet in the NBA finals. So he can still hold out hope that he won't get a stomach ache because of the altitude. (laughs) Fair. How could I forget him talking about, yeah, the stomach ache being here in the Mile High City? You know, Jake, you always bring such a unique perspective. I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about the fact that, yeah, there is things that go on behind the scenes. And you and I both know this from a media perspective of like hyping things up. And 
with it being on ESPN last year, of course, you're going to talk about the best player. That way people tune in and tune into the pregame and the postgame show and all of those type of things. I'd never thought about that. Yeah. And, and it's a reason why hockey's all of a sudden being covered again uh, in the last three mm. years. Who's the TV contract for hockey now? It's not NBC. It's ESPN again. So yeah. things are ma- these things matter. And when you talk about specifically the WNBA who has a TV contract coming up, uh, they'd be foolish to not go with ESPN. Even looking at MLS, they went away from ESPN to Apple in the last two years. And it yeah. feels like all of a sudden the attention is kind of dried up with the league a little bit. Uh, so these things do have an impact of who your biggest partner is and stuff like that. And uh, it is interesting. And I wrote this in my article and I've talked about this a couple of times. It is interesting that ESPN has fired or demoted three of the most vocal, outspoken critics of Nikola Jokic over the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, two more of those are Stephen A. Smith and Kendrick Perkins, who still work there and have voted against uh, Nikola Jokic with their number one pick in the NBA draft or, or the NBA MVP odds this year. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's something that is worth continuing to follow because these same people who are voting against Jokic now and making MVP cases against him now are mm-hmm. the same people that will be telling you later he's not the GOAT because he wasn't a unanimous MVP. Why wasn't he a unanimous MVP? Well, you didn't vote for him. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's such an interesting perspective. Good stuff over there, Jake. Uh, we will go to the play in because we got our Papa Murphy's question of the day. Who are we rooting for when it comes to the play in tournament? Great question. The Denver Nuggets would wax the Lakers and would easily take care of the Pelicans. I think that this is a win win for the Nuggets. I don't think they're going to be too concerned about who they play in mm-hmm. this round. I actually think the Pelicans are a better matchup, but you know for a fact that you've beaten the Lakers eight times in a row. So yeah. you feel confident about it. What I will tell you is what I think is the best path for the Nuggets, which is the Denver Nuggets should hope that they're playing the New Orleans Pelicans because. The Los Angeles Lakers are going to have a far easier time taking care of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yep. And if the Lakers beat the Thunder, a 1 8 upset, the Nuggets now are going to play the Pelicans and then the winner of Suns Wolves, which could be the Suns. I kind of think it's going to be the Suns. And then they can play anybody else, including the Lakers. So basically, if they don't play the Lakers this week, there's a chance they could run into the Lakers later on. And I still feel confident that they can beat the Lakers. Whereas I don't think the Pelicans are going to make a run, even though everything statistically says that they are a better team. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, Jake, I'm not really worried about the first round. I'm honestly not too worried about a lot of the rounds. I think once the Western Conference rolls around, things could get a little bit more interesting. But we'll hold that conversation for just a second. Is what's actually like the best game we're going to watch? Like, who's going to give the Nuggets an actual, like, all right, we got a good game here in the play-in. Because even though you don't want it to be too close for comfort, we're all kind of sweating and things can get out of hand. You never know. The postseason's a different season. But I still want to watch some good basketball as we go through this. So who actually is, like, the best matchup when we see it on the court? Yeah, the Lakers have taken the Nuggets to crunch time every single time they've played those last eight games except for one. So those games are going to come down to the wire, even though the Nuggets have proven time and time again they're the better team than the Lakers. Uh, The Pelicans had the sixth best net rating in basketball this year, which uh, essentially means you take your offense and your defense and you put one number on it. It's essentially point differential. So the Pelicans have been the sixth best team in the NBA according to point differential this year. That means they're the better team. Yeah. So I would kind of like to see that if I'm a basketball fan. I also think if you're a hardcore basketball junkie that just cares about the X's and O's and not like the narratives around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that Zion Williamson versus Nikola Jokic and how the Pelicans work without a great big and Jonas Valanciunas, but you know, CJ McCollum trying to get some revenge against the Nuggets for some past playoff series. Like that's a really interesting playoff series from a couple Agreed. different standpoints, but the Lakers, the narratives Oh, LeBron versus Jokic. They played each other twice in the playoffs. Each guy has won once. It's the rubber match. Like the narratives on the Lakers side are far more interesting as a storyteller. Basketball wise, it's definitely the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, that's my thing is I've kind of gone back and forth in my own head of obviously you want the easiest path for the Nuggets, but I still want to be able to watch some good basketball at this time. Like it's postseason NBA playoffs. Like this is fun. And so I do want to see some good games. And I do think the Zion Williamson and Nicole Jokic conversation would be a lot of fun, but then 
you can never honestly pass on a LeBron James conversation either. So I'm kind of just torn of like who I actually want to win tonight. And you had a fun stat the other day when you and I were just talking in the office. The number 10 seed has never advanced into the actual NBA playoffs, correct? Yeah, so uh, the Warriors are not getting in. Uh, they're, they're That's the fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, I think the Warriors are going to win tonight too. So I would expect that the seven seed is going to be the Pelicans and the eight seed is going to be the Lakers, which again breaks perfectly for the Nuggets. And then mm -hmm. you end up with, again, I think the Suns and then probably the Dallas Mavericks or Los Angeles Clippers. I kind of have a sneaky pick there for the Western Conference Finals opponent. And then Boston. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk about good basketball. I mean, if the Nuggets play Boston in the NBA Finals, that's going to be an all-time Finals. That's going to be just incredible. It's going to be the mm -hmm. reigning champs against undisputably one of the best teams regular season-wise in NBA history in the Boston Celtics this year. Uh, even before that, if you get Luka versus Jokic in a, fi uh, in a Western Conference Finals, that'd be awesome. It's so fun. Yeah, the Clippers this year are really good. You might get the Suns rematch with their three all-star players, including one of the best players of all time in Kevin Durant. Those mm -hmm. games last year were really fun. So I, I think even though the first round might not be the most interesting, you're talking about a two versus seven. It's not supposed to be that interesting. Yeah. When we get deeper into this, things are going to get interesting. I highly doubt even though statistically the Nuggets are a better team than they were last year, I highly doubt they only lose four times in the playoffs this year. I think that's going to take a little bit longer if they're going to, you know, get on their repeat bid. The West is stacked, it feels like, this year. And then you just look at the fact that if you do make it all the way and Boston's at the end of the, the tunnel and you have to play them, I don't know. And I'm curious, how pissed off were you when they lost to the Spurs? Because they controlled their own destiny when it came to getting the number one seed. You blow it to the Spurs. Now you lose home court past the Western Conference Finals or for the Western Conference Finals if you make it that far. How are you feeling? Six days ago, I was on Denver Sports Tonight with Will Peterson. I told him, I think the Nuggets are going to lose one of these three games because they want the two seed, not the one seed. I felt it coming, but in the moment... In the moment, obviously a horrible loss. Victor Ramanyama scores 17 points in three minutes. You lose control of your own destiny in the one seed. But the Nuggets made it clear they didn't care about the one seed. Jamal Murray sat out a quarter of the season. Like yeah. They finished with an NBA record or a Nuggets NBA franchise record of 57 wins. Yeah. And Murray missed a quarter of the season. They were not supposed to be the one seed. Yeah. And they almost were the one seed. I'm not that upset in retrospect with a couple days of hindsight and especially how this Western Conference playoff bracket has broken for the Nuggets. I mm -hmm. think this is a beautiful bracket for them. But at the same time, yeah, you, you shouldn't be losing to the worst team in the Western Conference who are missing four of their five starters and are just playing Wemby and Wemby's destroying you. Like that was a horrible loss. Yeah. But at the same time, again, game 81 does not matter as much as what we're about to embark on. So it, it, it altogether doesn't really have a huge impact. You also have to go back to last year, Rachel, when Malone said over and over again that the one seed was actually a disadvantage because mm -hmm. of they had to wait till Friday for the play-in result, whereas every other team knows at least by midweek week who they're going to play. So Fair. the Nuggets have a scouting advantage, they feel, by being in the two seed. And the only team that they would not have home court against in the playoffs in the Western Conference side is the Thunder. Mm -hmm. So, and I, again, I'm not someone who thinks the Thunder are making the Western Conference Finals this year. So I don't think that loss actually ended up costing the Nuggets anything. I think it actually gained them a better playoff uh, bracket. Is that why you said when you were on with Will that you think they're going to lose one of the games? Yeah, because the bracket made more sense to be on the two, three side than it did to be on the one side. Uh, but they again lucked out because if they had lost one of the three games, the most probable seed was three dropping mm -hmm. from one to three. But that Minnesota ugly loss to the Suns, which yeah. here's a stat for all of you paying attention, the Minnesota Timberwolves have not only not beaten the Suns this year, not led against the Phoenix Suns this year, but not have had a game within 10 points yes. in the second half. That's why the Suns are the betting favorite in that series. So I, I like that side of the bracket more. And because of that Timberwolves loss, now in case you do play the Timberwolves, you're hosting game seven at home, rather than if you were the three seed, you'd be traveling to Minnesota. Fair enough. How are you feeling as we get ready? It's time. Your favorite time of the year, it feels like, Jake. It's here. How are you feeling about the Nuggets with a possible repeat? You know, I've gone back and forth on this all year. Uh, I kind of didn't feel like it was going to happen throughout most of the course of the, the first part of the season. And yeah. they went on that January run that they went on uh, last year as well. 
I felt a lot better about it. Still wasn't ready to say like I was last year where I was just boisterous saying the Nuggets are going to win the NBA title. I mean, I was the most outspoken person on this last year. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the second half, they were so good. And, and they went 21 and six. Second half records don't really matter in the NBA all that much because of all sorts of funky stuff going on. Yeah. So the real question is when the Nuggets turn it up to 10 and they've been able to flip that switch, when Jamal's healthy, who can beat them? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is still just maybe the Boston Celtics. The only two scenarios I see where the Nuggets could lose a playoff series are if the Thunder just run them up and down the floor and the Nuggets are tired or mm -hmm. if the Clippers look like they did in December. So I don't see a way in which the Nuggets are going to lose in the West barring injury. Yep. But at the same time, I'm still not that confident that they're going to win uh, a title like I was last year. And maybe it's just because I know what's sitting on the other side. And there's the potential that Boston um, gets through the East without even losing a playoff game, honestly. At the same time, though, they might be facing Philadelphia with a healthy Joel Embiid or Miami who beat them last year in the playoffs and they could lose in the first round. So the, the East is a little bit more of a toss up than I think people think. Yeah, but I'm still not. If you were going to say Nuggets or the field, I would tell you the field last year. If you told me Nuggets or the field, I would have told you Nuggets. And it sounds crazy to say in hindsight because you're like, of course, you're saying that in hindsight. But if you go back and watch the show, I was saying that in live time. Oh, yeah. I feel I've, so many of us were so confident. It was the same thing with the abs when they were on their cup run. It was like, all right, if they get past the second round, the quote unquote boogeyman, they're going to make it. What they do got past the second round. It felt like I was like, all right, here they're going to go just sweep it all. I was even more confident last year with the Nuggets, of course, as they just started out their playoff run. And they uh, even the Sun Series, I was like, no, they're going to be able to move past this. They obviously go on this year. I'm still I'm still feeling really confident, which Makes me a little nervous because sometimes I feel like when we all get a little too confident, that's when things can go south pretty quickly. But I think they will make it to play Boston. And unfortunately, I don't know what happens if it's a game seven in Boston. You don't, don't even go play. there yet, Rachel. Don't go there. It's six weeks away. Somebody's going to get hurt on one of these teams. It's not even worth doing the Boston versus Denver thing right now. Like, it's not worth considering. We might but it well also wait. would be such a good matchup, which is why I, like, get so excited about it. Yeah, it would be very fun. It'd be an all-time finals. It'd be legacy building stuff for Jokic. It would be awesome. It mm -hmm. would be awesome. Um, Jake's like, Rachel, don't jinx anything. Shut your mouth. We got plenty of basketball left to play. Let's get through rounds one and two before we start talking about three and four all, all of a sudden like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, what are the Nuggets' shortcomings? Their bench, right? Like, we all know it. They don't really have a backup. Reggie big. Jackson. Yeah, Reggie Jackson is, you know, hit or miss. But later on in a playoff series, when it really matters, your rotation is an eight. It's seven. Yeah. And I like the Nuggets seven a lot. Peyton Watson had an awesome year. Christian Brown in the last 20 games I thought was fantastic, especially yeah. when they narrowed in his role and kind of shrunk his playmaking responsibilities because they tried to grow his game this year. It yeah. did work. He added stuff to his game, but then they narrowed in his focus, and he's been a lot better since they did that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're talking about the Nuggets seven guys, I really, really like the Nuggets seven guys. Reggie Jackson, absolute mystery. DeAndre Jordan, mm -hmm. Zeke Naji, absolute mysteries if they're going to go to them. So I, I don't feel that great about those guys, but the Nuggets are fairly healthy right now. Mm -hmm. Michael Porter Jr. is playing great basketball. Yeah, Aaron cool. Gordon's had an up and down season, honestly, but he's still very good. KCP has been awesome. Just been yep. awesome all year. And Nikola Jokic is the MVP, plus Jamal Murray looks healthy-ish, healthy enough coming into this playoffs where you feel pretty confident. So uh, I, I wouldn't pick against the Nuggets against anyone on today. You know, mm -hmm. today's date, if you put me in a room and you put all the teams, I'm not picking against the Nuggets. Uh, it just seems a little less certain than it did last year. And, you know, that's okay. Because yeah. there were a lot of good teams this year. Last year, there weren't a lot of good teams. Which just means that the postseason is going to be a blast. Like you said, we had a great college basketball tournament on both sides, women and men's. Hopefully, we can have the exact same thing when it comes down to the NBA. We just want some good basketball and hopefully another championship here in the Mile High City. Uh, real quick, Jake, before you go, I do want to talk to you about Cortland Sutton not going to workouts yesterday. Um, they are voluntary, so everyone's like, everybody stop freaking out. But as a leader of this team, you always hope to see them out there. Uh, is he worthy of a contract extension? Uh, no. Thank you. He's not, he's not that good. 
But if I thought you were going to ask me, would you show up to voluntary workouts? And I would say no. So I don't blame him at all for not showing up to a thing that he's not supposed to be at and doesn't get paid for. So whatever, like I, whatever, this is a big deal. Ooh. But the thing is like, who's he going to be catching passes from Rachel? He's going to be working on his relationship with Jared Stidham. That's meaningless. The second they draft Bo Nix. So who cares? It doesn't oh. matter. But should Cortland Sutton play past the next two years of the Denver Broncos? No, he's not that good. He's never been that good. He had one season before the ACL where it looked like he might be a top 10 receiver in the league. He's yep. never been above maybe the top 15 receivers in the league. Um, but it, it's it's fine. He's who you have. It, it's like I, 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 I would rather not the Broncos run out Josh Reynolds as their number one receiver. So Cortland is fine. He's just not going to be worth a contract extension at age 31 going into the next five years with a quarterback that is who knows. And if the coach decides, oh, I don't like this rookie, he's not that good. Like, you just don't don't extend Cortland Sutton. No, I'm totally with you. Do not extend him. I think that he doesn't want to be on this team either. This team is far off from the playoffs. I know people hate to hear that, but it's the truth. Um, I just love your take that you're like, He's not getting paid to be out there, so screw it. Don't go. Uh, when I look at it as I'm like... Who watching he, this show is showing up to work if you're not getting paid? I get that, but when you have to be the leader of the team... What does that even like mean? You gotta take one for the team and just go out there and say hello to people and do all of that fun stuff and show Sean Payton that you want to be out there too, which if he doesn't, then I guess don't put on a fake face by any means. Is he a leader of the team or simply just the most veteran guy still left in the locker room? Like, I, like, I don't know. Like, why is he, why is he the de facto leader? Just because he's been around a while. I'm not saying anything critical of Cortland Sutton. I just think it's ridiculous notion in professional sports to have to have a 28 year old lead a bunch of 21 year olds because they feel like they're going to go out and do something that's unresponsible. They are professional athletes. They know how to yeah. lift dumbbells. Cortland Sutton does not need to be there. At the same time, this is the exact thing that got Brandon McManus cut last year. So Sean Payton will not be happy about that. And by the way, the union was not happy about that because it's a grievance. Wait, I love this fired up Jake. Jake was up till 4 a.m. last night writing an article, which granted, Jake's usually up pretty late anyways. But Jake, I can just tell that you're like riled up. You're ready to go. Yeah, uh, my students are shooting a documentary about me today, and I'm like, why about like what are you gonna t what are you gonna do like like I don't I don't know. So you've done I'm some cool stuff in your life, Jake. Don't discredit yourself. Yeah, I don't I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that'll be interesting. I I just I honestly was like, can we just like get a burger instead? Like, and you could like I don't know. So I've got a lot of stuff going on here, Rachel. We've got we've got the playoffs coming up, which is just gonna be a lot of sleepless nights. I might be wherever you're not because I know you're going to the draft. We've got a lot of stuff. I've got family in and out of town the last, the whole month. Uh, so I've barely slept, but I'm raring to go. And uh, this is, by the way, no caffeine whatsoever. Like this is Starbucks cup, but this is water. It is just pure H2O. Keep yourself hydrated and we'll make it through the season together. All right, Jake, I appreciate you as always and everybody watching and hanging with us. I appreciate it every single day. All of your comments, all of your love, whether you agree or disagree with anything that Jake and I have to say, we just appreciate you spending a little bit of your Tuesday here with us on Coffee Break tomorrow morning. We will be back. Uh, Denver Sports Daily at 10 a.m. Coffee Break right back here at 12 p.m. But also... If you're watching us on YouTube, um, come hang out with us. And you can hang out with Zach and Phil the Drive as well. It's going to be super fun. All you have to do is subscribe to us on YouTube. It's super simple. Hit the subscribe button and you're entered in to win up until May 10th. You can come have lunch with us, check out our studios, watch some of Zach and Phil in the radio studio as well. It's going to be a ton of fun. Bar um, Brothers Barbecue will be sponsoring it. So yum, delicious. Come hang out with us. It'll be a great time. Make sure you subscribe and we will see you guys tomorrow for another episode of Coffee Break and Denver Sports Daily. Get back to work, everybody. We'll see you later.